Famcast Media. Bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, persons of all ages, welcome to the most exclusive group in the wrestling community. And now, your hosts, first. From me, gente, and welcome to another edition of Car Pod. And this episode is coming into you hot because we have some things to talk about. Let's start right away with the most toxic fan base in all of professional wrestling the AEW fans. I have seen so much interaction over the past week, ever since the CM Punk footage dropped, as to wrestling fans stating that. Well, it made sense for Tony Khan and the Young Bucks to use it for storyline purposes, only for one week later for them to ignore the footage, for them to ignore CM Punk. But we have an update. Because last week, they hit 820,000 viewers on Dynamite. It was their biggest Dynamite show in six months. The mere mention of CM Punk, the mere mention of the all-in footage from Wembley garnered 57,000 more people to watch. And this week, all 57,000 people left. And why did they do that? Because one, the footage didn't hurt CM Punk, it just got him more over. And it didn't help the Young Bucks. It didn't help FTR. If anything, it helped Jack Perry, who currently isn't working for the company. Now, Tony Khan, he stuck to his guns. He said it made sense. And he answered a question by the media as if he was in character. Trying to keep kayfabe alive, but it didn't work. You know why it didn't work? Because you got someone over that works in a different company. Someone who's doing so well that he can be held off television for almost an entire week. And he's still the most talked about superstar in all of professional wrestling. The most popular t-shirt in all of pro wrestling right now is CM Punk's Peace t-shirt. On Drew McIntyre. It's essentially a play on Drew McIntyre using the Arrowverse cemetery plot, saying goodbye to WrestleMania's main event, the CM Punk main event. While well, CM Punk is in the photo now, and it's Drew McIntyre on the grave, on the tombstone, with a date on it. With WrestleMania 40 on it. The most popular t-shirt in all of professional wrestling right now. Is CM Punk's shirt. The most popular and most talked about superstar. Is CM Punk. AEW did that in hopes that it would garner more attention for the company. And all it did was garner more attention for CM Punk. And here's my biggest issue with AEW fans. It is an issue that is constantly overlooked they might be the most toxic fan base since the Dallas Cowboys since the New York Yankees because they don't want you to watch their product they just want you to agree with them that their product is better that just simply isn't true The overusage of the Canadian Destroyer, the overusage of forearms to the side of the head, the overusage of the super kick, 
The fact that they need to bring out these monster moves like dives off a ladder. Putting people through tables on a regular basis. Not at pay-per-views. They don't save these moments for pay-per-views, which makes people buy the pay-per-views. They give it to you for free. Now, a while back, Eric Bischoff stated that booking Hulk Hogan versus Goldberg on free television, well, it was done so because they were a television company that had pay-per-views monthly. But people bought those pay-per-views. People watched Nitro. Now, people aren't buying the pay-per-views. A very small market of fans are watching Dynamite, Collision, and Rampage. And as we see, because the internet is undefeated, Dynamite, Collision, and Rampage are rarely full. The lower bowl is full, but that's about it. You see, they need that big signing to get you in the door initially, but then they can't keep you in the door. They can't keep you in the building. Because once you see Mercedes debut, once you see Adam Copeland's debut, once you see Sting's retirement, well, what tends to happen? They don't capitalize off it. They don't continue pushing that objective. They just stop. Sting retired and Darby Allin just goes away. What was the point of Sting working with Darby for so long to just have Darby go away? Orange Cassidy, the most prestigious international champion. A guy who made that title. Well, the title was taken off him. It was put on Roderick Strong. And Roddy's barely doing anything. Now, that worked for a guy like Roman Reigns because we had a decade of Roman. And he was the biggest star in all of professional... He still is. Roddy's not bad. If anything, the news we find out about AEW on a weekly basis is more and more bad news. We were just told that Adam Cole is nowhere near his return to professional wrestling. There are more rumors. We know that they're BS. We know they're not true. But there are more rumors that MJF is moving on to the big machine. Now here's something that I very, very, very curiously await. Mercedes Monet debuted last month in AEW. And let's look at the way she's being booked. And Julia, who is a global superstar, who is more so known from stardom and New Japan, she has signed a contract with WWE. Let's see how she's presented. Let's see how they utilize her name. Because I made this mention to my co-host Tyler yesterday. Let's look at the way Shinsuke Nakamura debuted for WWE. They knew what were his strong suits, and that was pro wrestling. They knew the best way to draw you in to be a fan of Shin was for you to watch what he can do in the squared circle. So his debut match with NXT is against Sami Zayn. There are still people talking about that match. There are still people that say that's the greatest NXT match they've ever seen. Since that time, Nakamura has been a United States champion, a intercontinental champion, 
<coughs> he's gone on to work and win the Royal Rumble. He's gone on to wrestle for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. He has huge wins over guys like Roman Reigns, John Cena, Randy Orton. That is the way you present someone. Now, it took them years to understand that they needed to use the subtitles and how that works because it's like a horror movie character. Mercedes Monet is not being used properly. And we know that. Eric Bischoff just stated that AEW is where WWE careers go to die. Now there's also this false narrative that AEW steals all of the big time free agents. Will Ospreay, Okada, Mercedes, Adam Copeland. And we forget about the fact that CM Punk was a free agent, signed with WWE. Cody Rhodes was a free agent, signed with WWE. Those guys are doing pretty well. Those guys are doing exceptional. Jade Cargill, a homegrown talent for AEW. Someone that made her debut in professional wrestling in AEW. Well, she chose to go to the big machine. And look at the way she's presented. It took them months to put her on television. To actually give her matches. Her first taste was the Royal Rumble. Her first big moment was eliminating Nia Jax. Now she's in a tag team with Bianca Belair. What better person to learn from? Bianca's a generational talent. And the hope is that some of her aura will rub off on Jade. Although Jade is pretty over all by herself. Now you can't tell me that WWE fans aren't petty. Because yes, Jade Cargill, she screams superstar. The moment she comes out, she looks like a million bucks. But... I think WWE fans know where she came from. And they know that she wasn't utilized properly in the other company. So, she's over with WWE. She's being slowly brought along. Being put in a position to be successful. Not being rushed. And I believe by this time next year for WrestleMania, she'll have a massive role. Now, I don't know where you guys fall on this, but I'm just tired of AEW fans telling us what to do when they won't do it themselves. Screaming at us, telling us that we don't watch the product. Well, neither do you. Telling us we don't buy tickets. Well, neither do you. You can tweet about it all you want. But tweets don't make money. Not all attention is good attention. Contrary to popular belief. AEW fans are the scrappy dude of wrestling fans. All bark and no bite. Oh yeah, they can make fun of you like the best of them. They can call you old. They can call you a shill. They can call you D-Riders. They have all the right words. But their actions don't match their words. They only live on the internet. 
But they're not only to blame. Oh, no, absolutely not. See, the people to blame is AEW and their top brass. Because they have not done anything to keep people's butts in the seats. They have not done anything. All they do is sign a big-time free agent for that one-time show. Now, I'm not complaining that Mercedes is with AEW and she hasn't wrestled a match yet. No, absolutely not. Sometimes a slow roll is the right play. What I am complaining about is that they're utilizing her weakest trait as a way to ingratiate her with fans. I've said it before and I'll say it again. She's not a good promo. She's a great superstar. She's a huge name. But her promos come off as borderline incoherent. They don't make any sense. This is the second superstar where they've brought in and they've thrown them with the B title. But don't take it from me. Go back and listen to Diamond Dallas Page tell you how they failed Wardlow. The hottest act in professional wrestling since Bill Goldberg. And how they fizzled him out by having him come out, cut a promo that he's not... Chasing the AEW world title. No, he wants the TNT championship. Only to have him win it, drop it, win it, drop it. And slowly just fizzle away. And now he's a background character to the kingdom. I can't tell you what to do. And you don't have to listen to me. But what I can tell you, because the facts are out there, is that AEW fans, they'll yell at you from their screens. But how are you supposed to listen to them? How are you supposed to follow their lead if the things that they're yelling at you about they won't do themselves anyway guys thank you so much for tuning in please like subscribe and share this must love wrestling is going live tomorrow As Tyler and I are going to break down some of the things going on in professional wrestling. We're going to go for it. We're going to talk about everything. Thank you so much for lending me your ear for these past 20 minutes. I appreciate every single one of you. And I'm out.